guys what's up what's up welcome once again guys to another video thanks as always for tuning in and you know as always let me thank let me thank you guys you know and let you know how appreciative i am for you to tune into another video and you know protocol as always let me remind you to like the video share the video subscribe if you haven't already done so and hit that notification bell guys so you know you will get notified as soon as i drop another video all right guys so um i have a, a, a few stories that i want to you know share with you guys and um let me try and see how you know how fast i can get through with it i hate long videos trust me so i know you know a lot of you guys probably feel the same way so you know i don't like when my video videos get too long so just bear with me guys and let me see how fast i can get through all right so a man who the police in margate over there in broad county florida said is responsible for several sexual batteries that happened between june of 1996 and november of 1997 will remain in jail without bond so the man is russell mclean who was arrested in may right and guys check this out he was he was arrested in jamaica right so um the man was you know a, a faculty member at you know northern caribbean university over there in J jamaica in a parish called mandeville manchester right guys so um you know it's so sad to see someone in that in that um uh what what what's the word in that um you know position you know being arrested for 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 such a crime you know what i mean somebody that i'm i'm sure you know a lot of people down there in jamaica look up to and he has he has um lectured you know so many people i i i i, I know and you know would imagine that you know people that some of them are successful now and all of that you know good stuff so he was a, he, um he was then extradited on july 7 back to broad county in usa right guys so listen this investigator said mclean would break into homes and threaten victims at gunpoint and then assaulted them right two of the two of the crimes occurred in the city of margate but despite all the victims giving the same description of the suspect, investigators um, had few leads, so no suspects were identified at that time. So guys, if it weren't for, you know, more modern technology these days, this man would not have been identified, much less to be caught. Right? So in 2007, evidence recovered in a burglary case led to the identification of McLean as a person of interest right but again over the next several years the investigation still failed to implicate him so mr mclean upon realizing he was being investigated of his crimes decided to flee to jamaica right in 2015 again a detective you know um, by the name of julio fernandez started to reinvestigate he opened back the cold case guys right so in um 2018 detective fernandez obtained dna evidence and compared compared them to dna located in a rape kit from 1996 right so those results were were conclusive that mclean's dna was a match right and you know there i talked about the, the 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 modern more modern technology now you know so those can detect dna samples for from as far back as 1970s and and such you know so um in august of 2020 an arrest warrant for multiple counts of armed sexual battery kidnapping and burglary was issued for mclean right so um but it wasn't until until may of 20 of 
May 24 of this year, 2022, he was located in Jamaica where he was work. He was serving as faculty member at Northern Caribbean University, which is called NCU. That's in Mandeville, as I said, Mandeville, Manchester, guys. So, guys, this man, this man was a lecturer in the College of Humanities, Behavioral and Social Sciences, right? That's what he, he lectured in. So, you know, it's, you know, it's kind of a, he, 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 I don't know, guys, but it's so, it's so sad, you know, to see somebody in that caliber to be arrested for, for, as a matter of fact, any form of, any, any sort of crime, more of a, sexual crimes like that at gunpoint you know what i mean guys so it is said that he was working at um he was working at the school for more than 18 years so he was then extradited back to the u.s you know with 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 along with the help of the u.s mar um, marshals and and you know other agencies so and um it is understood that he waived his extradition war um rights okay so he he he's been held in Mar in broad county lock um lock up without bond so the Margaret police guys is advising anyone who who thinks they were molested or assaulted by him to call the Margaret police at nine five four nine seven two seven one 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 again that number is nine five four nine seven two seven one 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 all right guys okay so moving along guys so oh, oh, the next story is again of a jamaican of a jamaican man who you know again was um charged with some crimes but listen up guys so this man who provided nearly 60 pounds of the white lady white lady and that white lady is as as some of you guys would have known is the cocaine so he provided at least uh, almost 60 pounds to a flight attendant to smuggle aboard a flight from los angeles international airport was sentenced Thursday to nearly 14 years in federal prison. His name is Gaston Brown and he's 42 years old of a Clarendon Parish in Jamaica. Right? So he received a 165-month sentence according to a statement from the U.S. Attorney's Office. He was also convicted in 2018 of charges that included identity theft and conspiracy to possess and distribute cocaine so guys listen to this part now this this guy here this this bridge is not he's not an easy person either trust me listen to this guys on six occasions in 2015 and 2016 brown paid a jet blue flight attendant Marsha Gay Reynolds and I know some of you guys probably would have remembered this case because I remember watching this case on what I'm um, watching the news and seeing you know, um you know the news about the, the flight attendant Marsha Gay Reynolds so just listen up guys so the flight attendant whose name is Marsha Gay Reynolds he gave her the 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 um smuggled drugs so, um, drugs and cash in suitcases through crew member checkpoints at LAX and at New York's John F. Kennedy International Airport. So prosecutors said as a known crew member, Reynolds, who is a flight attendant, was subjected to a much lighter screening at airport sc security, at airport security checkpoints, and would be able to transport the cash and the cocaine without being stopped right and i think cases like these that um you know move them to to start doing more stringent checks on the on the crew members now so brown who was already a convicted felon and also guys in the u.s illegally 
<laughs> so just imagine that he already a, a, a convicted felon and also in the US illegally. Then met Reynolds and retrieved the suitcases at the airport using identities he had stolen from two mentally disabled men to avoid detection. So those are the charges that led up to the, the, the um, identity theft. So Brown was charged with providing Reynolds with 59.5 pounds, which is 27 kilograms, of the white lady. And as I said, that is the cocaine that she tried to smuggle in a suitcase at LAX in March of 2016. Prosecutors said she dropped the carry-on the carry on bag after being randomly selected for additional screening so guys she was coming through i mean i guess you know to to um i think go on the flight or something but anyway when she was um randomly chosen to do additional screening she dropped the suitcase kicked off her heels then fled down an upward moving escalator guys <laughs> out of the terminal people listen not even Usain Bolt couldn't catch her that day <laughs> that's how far she was going right but she surrendered in New York days later she pleaded guilty to conspiracy to possess and distribute cocaine was sentenced to a time so she left she she would have left prison in 2018 guys right boy i'm telling you these the um i guess sometimes people don't think before they um they they do things are you know money boy money the love of money well anyway guys so this is the final story guys you know and this story is 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 you know kind of disgraceful and sad and also funny in a little way in my opinion guys so listen police say a, a man tried to kill his brother-in-law during an argument and guys even before i get into the story let me um let me show you a little short video so this is the this is the the man that i spoke of earlier who is um who, who, who was extradited from jamaica right and um you know this is so these are a few pictures of him what he looks like it was russell russell mclean and you can see guys he was you know an active person in the community who left one man so listen watch brand. this guy detectives say jonathan rogers went on the attack in mid-april during an anniversary party firing several rounds when the gunfire ended deandre dandridge who was trying to break up a fight was fighting for his life yes guys so listen this now um Police say a man tried to kill his brother-in-law during an argument at a couple's anniversary party in South Memphis, right? DeAndre Dandridge and Tiara Munn were celebrating their fifth anniversary on April 8th, right? And had invited several family members to a party at their home. And wood in Woodland on Woodland Avenue. So Mon's mother got into an heated argument over some uh, over some guests getting too many pieces of chicken, guys. <laughs> yes, guys, you heard it right. Over pieces of chicken, right, with another family member. So Jonathan Rogers got involved in the argument on behalf of his mother. Right, so Dan Dandridge attempted to de-escalate the situation when his mother, Stephanie Morgan, ordered him to go get his gun. So word is that the argument continued and escalated even more when Rogers pulled out two guns, guys, like John Wayne, 
and shot his brother in his brother-in-law Dandridge seven times. Right? Seven times. Roger's own sister, who was pregnant at the time, was caught in the gunfire. And, you know, thankfully she was she was okay. She didn't get any shot, but she was caught up in the whole, whole thing and, every, and all of that, guys. You know, but thankfully Dandridge, you know, survived the shooting, even though he got seven shots. And, you know, as you saw in the video, Roger's meanwhile is charged with attempted murder. And he has a court date coming up, guys. So, guys, you know, it is so sad when, when you see family members, you know, like, you know, get into, into, into such, you know, happenings like uh, weapons are being drawn and, you know, here you have gunfire. One person got seven shots. He didn't have to survive that, you know what I mean? But... I guess that's the way of the world and especially in these times guys it's like the whole world is upside down now you know because you, you know many times we have seen or heard of stories like these where families going against families brothers against brothers sisters against sisters and all that you know so we just have to keep it try and keep it together arguments will always arise but you know you don't have to escalate that much so anyway guys thanks as usual for tuning in and you know as always, please remember to like the video, share the video, subscribe if you haven't already done so, and hit that notification bell. And guys, please comment and let me know what you think of these stories, alright guys? So, blessed love, peace. One sign and out. Shot on, right here, elbow.